As more workloads are brought to the cloud, you need to stay focused on innovation. Microsoft brings the partnerships, apps and tools from the Linux ecosystem to Azure for you, making the cloud experience seamless. Azure offers a wide array of Linux distributions, ISV solutions and fully integrated open source technology for any scenario in any industry. Your workspace, your solution, your choice is powered by Linux on Azure. Today, I am going to introduce you to how to create free tier Azure Linux virtual machines. As we know, Azure provide one year free account to use, it will provide 750 hours of general purpose Windows and Linux servers. So, basically we can have two virtual machines, and for each virtual machines, you can create one 64GB premium SSD. So, let's take a look at provisioning an Ubuntu Linux VM in Azure. I am already logged into the Azure portal at portal.azure.com. I'm gonna go ahead and click create a resource, and it will take me to the Azure Marketplace landing page. And in the marketplace, it's giving me the list of the most popular images that can be provisioned in Azure. We have here the Windows Server 2019 and Ubuntu Server 20 at the top. So if you click on Ubuntu Server, it's gonna bring up Create a Virtual Machine Wizard. We will need to fill in the basic information, we need to pick the right Azure subscription. Next is the resource group, instead of picking an existing resource group, we will create a new one and name it Demo Linux VM RG01. And for the virtual machine name, I am gonna go ahead and give it a more logical name as my resource group and call it Demo Linux VM01. The naming convention may vary depending on your requirements. The next setting is the region, so I am going to pick Central India. And for the availability option, I am going to leave it as default, as we do not require any infrastructure redundancy for this demo and just a single VM. And for the image we have already selected, the Ubuntu Server 20.04 LTS. Then we can go ahead and choose the instance size. To be eligible for the free tire, we need to select the B1S with 1V CPU and 1GB of memory. So, click on Change Size and select B1S. Now for the administration, we need to choose the authentication type, by default it's choosing SSH public key. Normally, this is the recommended one you would use in a production environment. But, in this case just to keep the demo, I am going to choose password, and then I am going to enter the username, for the admin user, and a strong password. Down below here, for the inbound port rules, by default it has the SSH port 22 open, and it's not recommended for a production environment. Now if we wanted, we could choose rest of the settings and configuration in the other tab as default values, and click review and create and go ahead and create it. But, instead let's go ahead and take a look at what options are available. If I click next for disks, it's gonna give me the option for the disk type. I can choose between the premium SSD, the standard SSD or even the standard hard drive. In this case I'll leave it as premium SSD, that's gonna give you the best disk performance, and this falls under my free tier. And for encryption type, default it's going to encrypt at rest, using Azure Managed Key, and I am going to leave it as default. And then there is a section for adding data disk, so I could attach additional data disk to my VM for other data store. And the next tab is the networking, and by default it's going to create a new virtual network, a new subnet, IP address and things like that. If we have an existing virtual network, we can add our new VM to the existing virtual network. In this case I am going to leave it as the default as well. And then there are some configurations for the network security groups, which allows you to configure the firewall rules within the networking stack of the virtual networking connectivity for the VM, and there are other configurations like accelerated networking, load balancing, so and so. I am going to leave this as defaults and click on management, it's gonna give us some options to set up some configurations like monitoring, identity for the VM, as well as the auto shutdown feature. Let me go ahead and turn this on. Auto shutdown will automatically shut down the VM at a specified time every day if it is running. Definitely not something that we want to do for a production environment. But, for development and test environments you could have it shut down to save some cost, and you can also configure optional shutdown notifications. Where it will send you an email that you can confirm or deny, and if you don't confirm or don't say anything, it will shut down automatically. 
Next, we go to the Advanced tab, where you can install extensions like, Custom Scripts, Antivirus Extensions so and so. And then Tags to add tags within our resources, and then Review and Create. This Review tab is going to verify our informations, and if everything is good, it will show a green validation passed, and shows us an estimated cost of the VM, based on the configurations that we chose. Now if we go ahead and click Create, this will create the virtual machine, and we could see the deployment details of each of the components. The deployment is now complete, and it gives us this blue button to go to Resource, and it's gonna take us to that VM. Now, the VM has been provisioned, we can see things like the status running, and the public IP address. If I want to connect to this VM, I can click the Connect button here, and it's going to give me some options for SSH, RDP, Bastion so and so. In this case it's a Linux VM, and it doesn't have RDP, I am going to select SSH and it's going to give us some informations here. Now the informations given here is helpful if we were to use public-private key encryption. But in this case we set to use the username and password so we will go back to the overview tab and copy the IP address of my VM. Now, we will be using the Windows 10 command prompt to SSH to this Linux VM. This is something that I recently learned as a feature of Windows 10, making it much easier to remote into other computers on your network as well as public servers. The process is very simple, first thing is to go down to the search menu and search for features, and skip down to the manage optional features and search for open SSH client. If it's not installed, you can go ahead and select add a feature and search for open SSH and you can see right here, open SSH client. Let's go ahead and select that, and click the Install button. It won't take much time, and you can see it's installed here. Let's exit out of the optional features. In order to test our server with the SSH client, simply go ahead and type in CMD, that will get you to the command prompt. Currently I am in the Users folder, what I am interested in is remotely login into the Linux VM via SSH tunnel. So let's go ahead and type in SSH, followed by the admin username at public IP of the Linux VM, and hit enter. And there we go. It's the first time I am connecting to it, it's asking me whether I want to trust this server or not. In this case I am gonna go ahead and say yes and type in the password. Now I am connected with SSH into my VM, and I can go ahead here, and do any of the actions that I would normally do on my VM. Let's do one more thing, we are going to go ahead and install Apache on this machine. So the command to install Apache is sudo apt install apache2 and press enter. And it's going to ask you couple of questions. Do you want to continue, say yes, and press enter. And then it will continue to install Apache server. So, the Apache server has been successfully installed. The next thing what we are going to do is, open a new tab in the browser, and paste the public IP of the Linux VM, and hit enter. Now, you can see this is the Apache 2 Ubuntu default page, that means that Apache server has been installed successfully, and this is the index.html, that you are able to see right here. And if you want to stop this VM from incurring additional charges, or save your free limits, you can go ahead and configure auto shutdown feature, and turn it on any other time. But. If I want to manually shut down the VM right now, to save cost, I can go to overview pane for the VM and go ahead and click stop, and it gives me a warning. Let's say yes since I want to shut down this VM. Keep in mind I am gonna lose my public IP address because it's a dynamically assigned IP. In this case, I am going to go ahead and leave that and say OK. So. There we have an overview, creating the free tier Ubuntu Linux, virtual machine in Azure. If you like this video, please hit the like button. For notification on new videos, make sure to subscribe, and hit the notification bell button. Thank you for watching, see you on next video.